I was asleep in bed. Um, I had an eight month old baby and I'd been up all night with her and we were shooting a show the next day. Um, my call time wasn't until 12 noon, so my husband kindly took the baby to make her breakfast. And I just remember the phone ringing at 7 o'clock in the morning and waking me up. And I, I thought, who could be ringing at 7 o'clock? I know I'm working. Um, and it was my mother-in-law who was going to accompany me to work with my daughter and look after her while I was filming. And she said, I don't think we're going to work today. And I said, what, what are you talking about? And she said, turn on the news. And I turned on the news and... Um, my mouth just dropped open and my husband came in and I said, honey, what's going on? You know, um, it took so long to sort of register um, what was actually going on and that now, by the time I was caught up with it all, that it clearly was an act of terrorism and not just some horrible accident. Um, and I think my husband got a call to say that we wouldn't be going to work today. And then he said something really strange to me. He said... Um, with all those thousands of people, um, we're bound to know someone. And I was sort of taken aback because it was very unlike my husband to say something like that because he's like Mr. Positive. Um, and I went into sort of survival mode and thought I'd better go to the supermarket and stock up on, on stuff. And I remember going to the supermarket and it was so quiet. I mean, there were lots of people there. The music wasn't playing. Everybody was walking around sort of solemnly, being very polite to each other. Um, and it was just an eerie feeling. I drove home and I was at, at my car starting to unload groceries and my husband came out and he said, sorry. No, I'll be fine. He said that um, our executive producer, David Angel and Lynn, it had been confirmed that they were in the first plane to hit the towers and I just, dropped to my knees. Um, it was really shocking. Yeah. David Angel was one of the creators and producers and writers. Yes. No, 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 no. Oh gosh, David was a magnificent human being, the most elegant man you'd ever care to meet, the most kind, charming man, um, and devastatingly funny which was so surprising coming out of this elegant, um, white-bearded gentleman. You know, he could be devastatingly funny. And his wife, Lynn, was everything you'd expect him to, you know, um, to be attracted to. She was a beautiful, kind, wonderful woman. She was a school librarian. And since I have kids, I know the character of school librarians now. And, and she uh, was the kindest, gentlest woman. Um, we were all very close, you know, on, on that show. And just to hear that, I mean, on top of the sadness about everything that had already taken place that day, you know, um, just, it was just, just devastating, just devastating. Um, and then I remember spending just the rest of the day, um, on the phone with, uh, various cast members and producers, and we were just trying to all console each other and try to actually believe this had happened. To, it, it was such a, a shocking thing. And I, I, I I, it, it, you know, just so gut wrenching. I think the whole nation was in a, a, a state of post traumatic stress disorder for a long time afterwards. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How do you go back to work mm. and your job making people laugh? Yeah. You know, how yeah. do you go back to work to make people laugh? Oh my goodness. Um, we, I think, went back a week later to film the show that we were in the middle of filming. Um, we had a memorial service for David and Lynn at Paramount, which, um, although didn't heal us, made us feel a lot better. People shared stories. Um, it was at the Paramount Theatre, and I, I just remember people coming in sobbing and leaving with uh, feeling lighter again and sort of feeling a little bit okay about things. And uh, I remember the first day going back to work, we thought, how how is this possible? How are we going to um, have an audience in here tonight? How are we going to um, tell jokes and be funny? And um, and David Hyde Pierce uh, had received a letter from a friend saying that he and his wife had been watching Frasier the night before and um, had realized they were laughing um, for the first time in a long time and how important that was and how important what we were doing was to, um, you know, to people to, to help them heal, 
and to sort of go back to that sense of I don't think anyone's ever been the same since then but a sense of you know life can go on we will get through this um, you know and, and heal and heal it's, it's hard for the people who are trying to get through it it's it, very very tough you know and I I don't think I turned my I don't think I ever turned my television off that first uh, few days because I just was I just wanted information I just wanted to know we were safe I you know I I felt if I if I turned the TV off I would miss something I would miss um, you know some sort of warning or you know I think we were all in just so, uh, so shaky about everything and yet and another way to connect also mm -hmm. TV, yeah like okay there's still a world out there there's still lots of stuff mm -hmm. going on and we did that first show and we got through it and we had fun and we laughed and um, you know uh, David Angel was never far from any of us that night I know the the hole that was left with the loss of David and Lynn didn't just affect us um, they uh, never had children of their own but you found out all these amazing things about them after they died the um, they, they would uh, take young foster girls and set them up in their first apartments and buy them sheets and towels and saucepans and all the things they needed to start their lives. Um, and that's just one of the many, many great things that they quietly did, that we didn't know about. Um, so the loss, not just to the entertainment industry, but to um, the lives of young people was tremendous. In the very last episode of Frasier, um, Niles and Daphne have a child together and we named the child David, our little angel. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Well, I think um, the old saying, and it's so true, laughter is the best medicine. And there's a great sense of release as well when you're able to laugh again. Um, I've known people with bad illnesses, you know, and they say the thing that helped them heal the most is is the you know to surround themselves with laughter and fun um and um you know i mean we always say we're not curing cancer here we're entertainers but i think after 9 11 it really showed us that we do have a place you know and we cannot discount the importance of what we do to the lives of people sometimes you know um as i say if you can make someone laugh and feel better, it's it's a great thing. It's great for the endorphins. It's great for the endorphins. <laughs> I think listening to music again, you know, suddenly being able to hear music again, and and um, and certainly laughing, you know, with um, my castmates, and and watching other shows and watching movies, and not being bombarded with those images um, all the time as we were. That was uh, whew, that was really wonderful, and holding my baby as well. You know, I had a new baby, and to sort of, for this to happen when she was still an infant and the impact that that would have on her life later on, you know, as it still does, we're still in a war. Um, ten years down down the line, you know, we're still battling terrorism and the threat of attack. She lives in a different world to the one that she was born into, you know, really. It's a different world now. We sure do. And you're reminded of that every time you travel. Um, but they say, um, you know, terrorism is, is designed to sort of disrupt and, and, and collapse your way of life. And it didn't do that. Yeah. It did for a few weeks. And, you know, it's had it, But it had, but it, um, people have carried on and they haven't changed their, their lives, you know. Okay, we have a bit more security at the airports now, but they, they, they didn't win. We, we come back and we're stronger and we, we laugh and we get on with our lives. Mm -hmm.